Hey guys, RC here. Welcome back. Bullbound College Football. This is episode seven. Yes, I confirmed it is episode seven. Uh, this will be the end of season review. We'll take a look at the uh, final statistics for our team. We'll take a look at some of the national leaders. We should see the uh, Heisman winner and what have you. Uh, but I wanted to pop in on this screen. So this is the team roster screen. And you can see we do have this status. So they do have the little uh, red cross here. This is if they're injured. You can mouse over and see that. Uh, also, this is where you would see the red, uh, the white F in the red box if they flunk out academically. So you can see all that. So this is this is the only place to really see that. So you do have to go to this extra screen. Uh, but that is what it is. But let's take a look at our stats. Well, let's start off at standings, I suppose. So we finish at fourth in the conference. Not bad. I think that's pretty respectable for us. Uh, we had 112 points, 482 against, 4 and 3 in the conference, 4 and 8 overall. Uh, so I, I'm pretty happy with that. 3 and 3 at home, 1 and 5 on the road, and 0 oh and 1 against ranked opponents, being Miami this year. Uh, Arkansas State went uh, 7 and 5 overall, 6 and 1 in the conference. Florida International finished 5-2 and two and must have beaten Middle Tennessee head-to-head -to, -head to get ahead of them in, uh, in the conference. Uh, but Middle Tennessee with seven wins, they'll be bowl eligible. This is one where if there are two bowl tie-ins for the conference, Florida International might get one because they finished second, even though they're 5-7. and seven. Not sure if that would go to, to the third-place team or not, but it is the overall... Uh, record that determines bowl eligibility, so probably so. Uh, you could actually be bowl eligible and win your conference and have a losing record. Uh, you know, I mean, they could have been six and one in the conference and you know, zero oh and five outside of the conference, but they did win one. Uh, but let's look at stats. So quarterbacks, well, neither one hit fifty percent of their throws. Pretty crappy. But Williams does throw for 2,000 yards, 12 touchdowns, 8 interceptions, uh, 5 and 4 for Faust, who will be graduating. And uh, yeah, could have been better, but I think we made the right call starting Williams this year, at least going to him in the long run. Scott was our leading ground gainer, 199 carries, 742 yards, only one rushing touchdown. Again, uh, you know... If I'm running a predominantly passing attack, we're not going to see a lot of running touchdowns. Faust ended up with 33 carries for 237. Miller, 58 for 248. No touchdowns there. Fountain must be a fullback. Yeah, fullback. He got the only other rushing touchdown of the season. On the receiving front, Owens leads the way with 46 catches, 766 yards, three touchdowns, eight drops on the season, 8.2 percent drop ratio. Uh, Parker, 44 catches, just two behind, 599 yards, and six touchdowns. So he was our red zone guy, evidently. Uh, White, Scott, 400 yards apiece, and then we drop off to a couple of guys in the 200-yard range. That's about all we can expect. So this is, you know, this is what you get with a 30 prestige team. Um, award finalist, I'm not going to look at that yet. Let's check out the polls, though. The so Oklahoma finishes the season ranked number one, getting in front of Tennessee. Looks like mostly based on strength of schedule, which is this SOS column. They have a strength of schedule of 25. Tennessee had one of 43, so a little bit easier schedule. Uh, Florida State had the one loss, but got up there on a number seven strength of schedule there. So if we take a look at the... Gray Dog computer system ratings. Uh, you have Oklahoma, Tennessee, Florida State, Florida. Now, where we go from here, so we finished the regular season in week 15, right? So there's nothing going on this week for us. Uh, we're going to go ahead and simulate that out. That's the last week for most of these clubs. Awards will be finalized. This is where your players also develop for the offseason, which is good. All right, now, award winners are announced. If you get an award winner, it will be in your email here. 
Also, if you make the, a bowl game or the postseason uh, right here, you'll see you can lift, we lift the suspension for all players. So even if you have a bunch of starters out, they come back and are bowl el and are eligible for the bowl game or the playoffs. But we don't have anything to look at there, but we will look at the award winners just because it's interesting. So the Heisman Trophy goes to Michael Harris of Boston College. And I'll let you guys check out his ratings here if you want to see something. Uh, just pause it, but you can see he's rated 10 out of 10 overall. Uh, 4,161 yards, 39 touchdowns, 11 picks. The Bednarik Award, which is for the best defensive back, goes to James Haynes of Mississippi State. And I will just scroll through these. All right, there's your national winners. Uh, now, we can look at the first team All-Americans. Uh, you can take a look at that. Michael Harris, of course, the Heisman winner is the first team quarterback. Uh, then we go to first team defense. I usually just kind of breeze through here to see if we get anybody named. Probably not. Not at this level. But you can also see what kind of rate ratings they're getting, what kind of stats. Bobby Bradford from LSU, free safety, second team All-American. And these don't always make the most sense. You'll get one and you'll kind of scratch your head and go, what the hell was, was the game thinking there? Um, is what it is. Don't get me wrong, I love the game, but it's not perfect by any stretch. Not perfect. That's why I'd love to see. There's two reasons I'd love to see an update. One, a couple of reasons. I think technology's come a long way. They could do something a lot better graphically, uh, design-wise. As far as the gameplay, I think it's really good, but I'd like to see updated offenses and defenses. A lot of things that have developed in the last 15 years uh, with, you know, the run pat, you know, the run, the RPOs and things of that guys like Cam Newton and Tim Tebow, you know, that, you know, you just didn't see back then. Right. And, uh, then I would like to see him really tweak it to where the option really worked the way an option worked for Oklahoma and Nebraska back in the seventies and early eighties. Um, I think that's something every single one of these college football games is lacking is the ability to run those specialty offenses and be good at it. Uh, but anyway, that's just my thought. And, you know, and then greedily, because I'm in an online league, is a new game would get more people interested in it, more people buying the, the new game, and more people being able to play in the online league with us. Um, you know, it's hard to say, hey, we've got a 16-year-old game. Uh, you want to buy it and come play? You know, most people don't do that. And that's why you see Football Manager comes out every year. There's not any huge changes to the game, but they get repeat buys. Um, and, you know, there's not a lot of multiplayer in that. There, there's some, but not really. Out of the Park Baseball, OOTP, every year. Front Office Football was, you know, every few years. I mean, you know, not not every year like clockwork, but He's uh, he's on what version eight or nine or I don't know, ten maybe something. All right, now we go back to first team and then we're gonna look at we can look at each conference. I'm only really worried about ours. All right, so let's see Arkansas State, Middle Tennessee. All right, so Raymundo Fleming is a tight end. He got a first team All Conference, twelve catches, two thirty six and a touchdown. And coach of the year was Arkansas State. Fair enough. Uh, Richard Diaz was first set first team defensive end all conference. Nineteen tackles, seven sacks, three stuffs, no interceptions. We also had the uh, first team all conference punter in Paul Garcia, thirty eight and a half yards per punt. Seventy five was as long. 
and 14 coffin corners inside the 20. So not bad there. We'll scroll through the second team. There's Carlos Williams making second team all conference. That's pretty strong. Jason Peterson, second team center. Kenneth Foster, second team defensive end. So both of our defensive ends got recognized. Adam Saucedo, second team linebacker in the conference. And there are your third teams. Andrew Owens, third team wide receiver. Probably would have been a shot at second team had he not been suspended. Shane LeBlanc, third team offensive tackle. William Shaw, third team guard. Gregory Means, third team kicker. So we're pretty well represented here in the conference. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, so week 15 is the last week. for That's typically your rivalry week. We had ours in week 14 just by the uh, nuances of scheduling. But then we go to conference championships. Uh, the Sun Belt does not have one. So there's your conference championships. Tennessee beating LSU. I saw that. All right, the playoff seating. So remember, we're doing a four-team BCS style playoff. It's not the, you know, it's not the, uh, you know, it's not anything fancy. So you have Oklahoma's the number one seed. They'll take on Georgia. Tennessee's the number two seed. They'll take on Florida State. So that's what's going to happen there. Now those will take place in, all right, so here's all your bowl games, the Las Vegas Bowl, Motor City, uh, GMAC, Poinsettia. Again, these were real as of the time that the mod, Icy's Real World mod, was done. Let's get through that. I want to look at the top 25. All right, so, you know, this will give you guys a good look. All right, so there's week 18. Uh, let's see. All right, here's this. Week 20 is the first round of the playoffs, and then week 21 will be the championship, right? So let's go ahead and sim out week 19. So Alabama loses to Miami in a barnstormer. Michigan loses to Oregon State. So my dream job is uh, is there. I won't get promoted to it yet, but that's the goal. All right, week 20. One of the other things, just get in the habit, especially if you're playing the game a lot, save every couple of weeks. Just hit the save button over here. Boom. Because uh, the game has a nasty tendency to crash if you play it too long. Now, in an online league like I play, you're only opening it and it's only going a week at a time, so not an issue. But when you're actually playing it by yourself, when you're playing the solo play, and you might do a couple of seasons in a day or whatever, just get in the habit of saving. You'll thank me later. Last thing you want to be is uh, you know heading into the postseason uh, bowl game or playoffs, and you know on the back end of a 12-0 and 0 season and the game crashes and you have to start all over again. <laughs> That's frustrating. All right, Oklahoma beats Georgia 41-29, 392 yards in the air and two touchdowns for Georgia's quarterback in the loss. 139 yards rushing and 167 yards receiving for the leaders for Oklahoma. And Florida State pulls the upset over Tennessee, giving the Vols their first loss of the season. 41-19 wasn't even close. 318 and two touchdowns through the air for Neal. 107 yards and three rushing touchdowns for Higgins for Tennessee. Big, big win. And that means the national title will pit number three Florida State, 12-2 on the season against number one and unbeaten Oklahoma. Who's got it, guys? Oklahoma's only favored by one point. And it's Oklahoma, 38-31 victors, 460 yards through the air for Lewis, the Oklahoma Sooner quarterback. Higgins had 117 and two scores on the ground, but Lewis was named player of the game, and Oklahoma hoists the trophy the Gray Dog Championship game in the Sugar Bowl. Very nice. All right, so that's the end of the season. At this point, we will advance stage. Uh, well, I tell you, before we do that, let's run into our roster, and let's sort by class. So everybody from Mays up is who we're losing. So Scott, starting running back. Owen, starting receiver. 
Uh, LeBlanc starting offensive tackle, honestly not going to be a loss. Diaz starting defensive end, he will be. Uh, so you can see any, you know, any of the yellow guys are going to be big hits for us. The orange guys are still going to be pretty big hits. And then coming in next year, we're going to have our red shirt juniors uh, coming in as red shirt seniors next year. Uh, wow. All right. So what I'm going to do for recruiting is I will go in and I will recruit probably half the recruiting period until because the first three weeks is, you know, especially at a low end team like this first three, four, five weeks of recruiting, you're not going to sign anybody. Um, what I might do is just come back and kind of show you how I sort things. Uh, cause I know a lot of you guys have questions on that. Um, and I'll show you kind of how I get started. And then a lot of recruiting is just a drag out. So I'll skip a lot of that on camera. I'll come back and we'll just kind of hit the highlights of players that we have signed uh, at the time they sign. So let me get into that. And uh, we'll see you guys back here in just a second. All right, guys, we are back. Let's jump into team evaluation. This is kind of your club vision if you're familiar with football manager. So team performance, I have been graded an F, talent a D, F in recruiting, not my fault. That's what I was given to start with. A B for meeting the board expectations, although eh, a C for prestige and a D plus overall. Now you can also see our prestige has fallen a point from 30 to 29. Prestige typically doesn't move horrendously fast in either direction. So, but it can go down, uh, you know, multiple points. It can go down or up multiple points. But a D plus overall grade got us a one point drop. So, you know, again, six wins on the season, bowl eligibility, win your bowl game and then worry about winning the, the conference. Those are kind of your four steps. And if you do that, you'll typically get a, a good evaluation, see your prestige go up, getting to a bowl, winning the bowl, and then winning your conference. That's, that's where it's got to be. Again, beating your rival also helps out in this. Uh, you do get a little bonus there. So uh, I think this is this year. It's our year to win the Sun Belt. And I'm not well no that was this past year. All right, team info. This will all flip over. All right. So, we do have a job opportunity. Louisiana Monroe, our rival. Now you have to keep in mind I actually graduated from Louisiana Lafayette before it was called that. Louisiana Monroe was our rival. And I will no way, no how, no way in hell coach that team. So, but we did get a job opportunity. So this is unlike football manager where you can go out and you can apply for jobs. You have to be approached that there's an opening. Just because there's an opening doesn't mean you'll get it. But typically you will. Uh, but yeah, so we're, we're not going to take that. Uh, so we're going to delete it. Thank you very much. Uh, financial constraints. This is important. So our budget for next year will be 1.76 million, no change. So the higher you get, the higher, you know, the higher prestige, the more money your program will have, the more high, the higher budget you'll have. But also, you know, let's say I was at Michigan and I had a season like this, 4 and 8, one I'd probably get fired, but two, we would probably see a huge drop, 300,000 potentially in our budget, which means we might actually have to cut back on recruiting, which that doesn't help us, or we won't be able to afford all of our coaches and we'll have to maybe get rid of one of our good coaches and come back with somebody not quite as good. So the good news here, no change. That's good. Oh, it also tell it also tells you in there, excuse me. We'll have 52000 a week to spend on recruiting each week. Now, if I hire a staff member, a new coach that costs more than my current coach, that will reduce my weekly recruiting. So out of this 52000 your scouting runs 500 to 2000 you know, 
for the initial scout. And then recruiting is anywhere from 1,000 to 4,000 per week. Right now, we've got 19 scholarships. So let's say somewhere right in the middle, so about 3,000 a player. So we're needing about $60,000 a week to recruit that many players. Don't quite have that, but it's close. And we'll make do. This is another thing as you get higher up in the prestige, you'll have underclassmen uh, declaring for the draft. So you can see this guy is a senior, uh, means he was a junior in the, uh, in the you know, this past season. Uh, junior was a sophomore last year. So you can lose juniors and seniors. If they're transfer players, I don't think they declare early. I could be wrong on that, but I think that was a thing. Of course, we're not going to have anybody in there, so we'll get rid of that. All right, we're in week two. Just save out a habit. All right, this is where we're going to look at staff. So I already know I hate my offensive coordinator. He's actually good up here. I mean, motivation is a big deal. Game planning is a big deal. Scouting is, I mean, all that's a big deal. I don't like him at all. So I'm paying 375 and 400 respectively. Now, here's the cool thing. You don't have to fire them up front. So if you have, well, first off, you can have, a, you'll, you could get an email saying that, hey, I'm opting out of my contract. They can do that at any time. So I may have gotten a thing saying, hey, I'm leaving and you'll come here now and it'll be blank. Or you could say, hey, I got hired by another team and I've appointed this guy to take my place. Well, that would be like a grad assistant or one of your lower assistants that, you don't, that doesn't count in the game. Uh, but right now they're here. Now, I could fire him or I could leave him, right? Right now, there's no benefit to fire him. If you hire someone and they accept the job, he'll terminate automatically. So I would never, ever fire a coach prior to, because you may not be able to hire anybody better. So the first thing I want to look at is a defensive coordinator. So this guy's 400000 and he's crap. So I am going to sort by development and, you know, just pick a column, right? You know, let's say I want my defensive line to be, so that sorts out in order. So we're at 400000 So I'm going to kind of scroll down here till I see somebody in that neighborhood. Well, here's a guy at 425. His scouting is not as good, but his development's better. Okay. Let me keep looking. How about this guy that's 450? All right. So he can scout pretty well. Game plan and motivation is average. Can't develop linebackers very well. Okay. So let's do this. Let me switch over to linebackers. And I can tell here he's awful at defensive end. Okay, there's a guy. He's got at least orange in every category. That's a win for me. So I'm going to make an offer. Now, if you really want to get the guy, you have to pay him more. But I'm kind of tight on budget. Remember, I'm only paying McCormick 400 So I'm paying 50000 extra per year. So we're going to make the offer. So you see he pops in. Rivera now shows with this asterisk. So that means that I have made an offer to him. Now, if I go to him here, I can hit fire. And what that'll do is it will remove the bid on Rivera, not fire McCormick. So keep that in mind. Only problem is you have to remember who you bid on, right? All right. So now let's go look at offensive coordinator. Now, here's one of the tips. We liked our special teams guy, right? Oh, did hold on. What happened here? There you go, opting out of my contract. Oh, that's crap. Because he was the only one I liked. So he's going to check out some offers. I don't, so he was getting underpaid, right? All right, so that's an issue. All right, so let's go into special teams first. And we can sort here and find our guy. All right, now this is what's important. So you see, we were paying him 100000 right? Now he's asking 175. He already has four bids, and the top team is North Carolina. So with multiple bids, that's your indicator that you've got to go 
over and above. And that's on the personal. In fact, let's go back in our coordinator here. Rivera's got five bids. So you know what? I'm going to go to Rivera here. That's one thing. This is a thing that could be improved. You should be able to highlight, a, this guy should be highlighted or something, and then have a remove offer. So what I'm going to have to do is fire coach. But see, then that's going to fire him. So I can't even redo my bid here. I'd have to raise it. But I think it's important enough. I'm going to, well, see, I can't even do that right now. So I should have looked at that first. He has five bids. We are not going to get him. All right, so special teams. Let's look at development, and we need somebody that's really cheap. So this is, if you're paying, a, if you get your budget cut, this is the easiest place to save money. Just, you know, drop your $200,000 guy and go with a $150,000 guy if you can find one. Here's one at one fifty, dollars or you can sort by salary. All right, so awful, awful. Okay, so here's 125,000 and below. So that's about the best that I could hope for. So it's Ballard and Taylor, right? So let's sort by name. Ballard does not have any offers. So he's only 31. So let's go ahead and offer him. You can't undercut them, you can only pay them more. So we're going to pay the 125. And then we want a new offensive coach, just to remind you what Whittington is. He's not bad in scouting, but he's not, he can't develop at all. So we want development. I think developing your quarterback is the most important thing. And this guy is making three, he was making 300 a year. So I can't afford a ton. I like him a little bit, but that's 475. 450. Here's one at four and a quarter. That's not bad. I mean, you know, he's not the greatest scout in a couple of positions, but he can at least develop people, right? So he's orange in every category. So Michael Hill, let's go find him. There he is. All right. So he does not have any bids on him. So we're going to make the offer at four and a quarter. We'll go with that. All right, we'll advance the week. Now I'm going to have to go find Rivera immediately. And doesn't matter. He rejected the offer, went to Wake Forest. Fair enough. So we go back in. I want to look at, all right, so we are still the top team, and he only has the one bid on the offensive coordinator. Only the one bid on Ballard at special teams, so we're good there, and we're the top team. So defensive coordinator. Now we want to go back to development, and we were paying him four hundred thousand. Oh, we were paying three seventy-five. I could have gone up a little bit more, but I think we found a good guy if we can get him. All right, so four hundred thousand. How about Wayne Barnes? All right, Barnes has three bids. Top teams, Northwestern, probably can't outspend them. They're a Big Ten team, all right? Let's go back here. The problem is you see it goes back to alphabetical order every time you do that. All right, so Barnes, what about Paul? He's not as good, but that means we might have a shot at getting him. No bids, all right? So let's look at him again. So. His preferred defense is a 335. So he gets he gets a personal bonus to that, but you can still run a 34 or a 43 if you want to. I would never run a 335 in my life um even if you paid me to do it. So, well, if somebody wants to pay me six figures a year to run a 335, by God, call me and I'll run a 335 in, for you in real life. But I won't run it in this game. But I do like this. He can scout decently, which is all we need at this level. And he can really develop defensive line and linebackers. Let's make him an offer and advance the week. All right. We did not get any emails. All right. So that means, and again, a big prestige team, you're, you know, like Wake Forest signed that guy in week one. 
we're not going to have that option. All right. Now, see, this is another thing. Now, I have, I have to remember who we made a bid on because it doesn't show here anymore. So I can't go in and remove the bid. I think that's a shortcoming. Um, was it him? No. You guys probably remember. Because I have to remove the bid before I can bid on somebody else. So we, we are not. So I'm going to have to go through here one at a time. I'll edit this out so you don't have to see it. Well, I can't find anybody. So, yeah, I didn't have an email, so that's weird. All right, well, let's, uh, I still want to get rid of this guy. I think it was Hill, right? I think it was, well, Michael Hill. He's got, two, oh, maybe that is the guy. Two bids from Utah. All right, well, let's raise it. To, well, I can't do that because, again, it, I can't do anything without removing that bid. And that's, I, I really hate that. All right, let's look at our defensive coordinator. Still the number one guy there. And still the number one guy there. So we're going to be stuck with our offensive coach. Because I can't, you only get three weeks. Michael Hill. It was Hill. And I couldn't remove it. That's too bad. I think what you have to do is you have to click down in this area where your actual coaches are listed and fire him from there. But I didn't do it because I didn't remember because it's not coded in a way that you can remember who your people are. Come on, Arlie. Get a patch at least. That's, that's horrible. All right, so Hill rejects it. But we do sign our new special team and defensive coordinator. I would have rather have gotten an offensive coordinator, though, if I could have. All right, so there's our new staff. So first-year coaches, both of them. I thought Ballard was better than that. Oh, well. But we did get a, a much, much better defensive coach, so hopefully that helps us a little bit. All right. I don't usually evaluate my team. So what I usually do for recruiting, this episode is going to run long, but again, I'm going to kind of get you guys started in recruiting, and then I'll do that off camera, and we'll come back next episode to finish out recruiting because I do want to try to keep these episodes as short as possible. All right. In fact, we're not even going to get to recruiting today because transfer bids are first. So transfers, a player can choose to leave your school for any reason. They don't like you as the coach. They didn't get enough playing time. Typically, it boils down to playing time. So if you've got a guy you want to keep, you got to play him. You can't redshirt him or play him behind somebody else. That's kind of, or, you know, you have to play him at least evenly. So what we can do here is I usually go in and I look for interest and I look to see if I've got anybody with high interest. I don't. Doesn't mean I can't sign anybody, but I'm probably limited to most people that are going to be from our state. So we've got a couple of freshmen here and the offensive tackle looks really good. And the cornerback would be probably at six would be one of the best players on our team. Uh, we can also hit uh, Mississippi. Now, don't go crazy on transfers because every person you make a transfer offer to comes out of your recruiting budget, whether you sign them or not. So if you lose them, that costs you money. So you can actually blow your entire recruiting budget and that comes out for the entire recruiting season, right? So we're going to go after four players. We didn't get any emails. The only thing I'm going to do coming back in is just double check interest, see if anybody has gone up. They have not, because that can change from week to week. All right, transfers are a three, three week process. So we have one more week. We did get two emails. So Jeffrey Olson transfers here. That's the cornerback. That's the six-rated guy. Justin Jones ends up going to Oregon, the eight-rated guy. Not a surprise. Not a surprise. Also, if you have anybody that chooses to leave your school, you'll get notified in those emails. You can always try to bring them back, but I wouldn't recommend it. And there is a long shot that at the end of the third week that they may decide to stay at your school. Just you know, 
All right. What I do want is I want to look at a quarterback. This guy's from Virginia. I'm going to offer him, and I am going to offer the South Carolina running back. Um, you can only offer one player at a position per week, so keep that in mind. Pick and choose wisely. All right. Check those emails. And they both went somewhere else. The running back went somewhere else. The wide receiver went somewhere else. The quarterback went to Pittsburgh. There's the final recap for the final week. Now, this is interesting. Keep this in mind when you are a lower to middle level prestige team. I think it cuts off at around a 60 prestige, but you will get an email, what we call them an email player. So this player, Lewis Nash, wants to come to school. So make sure you click on that and take action. He's automatically added to your watch list. Now, here's the reason that's important. Let's get into the recruiting screen. All right, we're going to look at the entire pool. So this guy is, he's from Montana. Typically, with a, because of your limited budget, a smaller prestige team will only recruit in state and in region because that's your cheapest options it's also your highest conversion shots you know you're not going to go from louisiana out to california and land players you've got all the small california schools uh you know the, the nevada schools um i would say the or the second oregon school but you get the point uh montana schools they're all but this guy evidently wants to come here and it should tell us why. My girlfriend just got accepted there and plans to enroll. We really want this relationship. So, you know, it could be I've got a friend that plays there that, you know, from my old high school. It could be a girlfriend. It, it could be anything. There's a couple of things that will come up. But he has got a uh, definite want to come here. So the first thing I do is I find that player. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to ratings. I'm sorry, ranking. So you can see if we sort by national rank and interest, he's number 1294. The next guy on the list is 1576. So the email guy is typically the best player you'll be able to recruit. It also gives you a good indicator of where you need to be looking at. So I could still look in the 1300s, but you can see what we're mostly dealing with as far as a 10 interest level. We can go down to nine, but that's still 1500s, right? So first thing you want to do, because this guy's going to be more expensive, let's open him up. We're going to scout him, and you can see that's 1500 bucks. And we're going to put, I always put max recruiting dollars. So that's four grand. So out of our 52,000 or whatever it is that we had, we're already down to 47,000, okay? Now, that money is now allocated to him. Now, what this does, your scouting will give you this information up here. Your recruiting program that you buy during, when you're doing your budgeting and stuff, that will give you this information. And then the recruiting will give you the personal preferences. And we'll talk a little bit about that because there is something unique in there that I will share here on the channel that I've never shared with anybody before. Um, a lot of people know it, but a lot of people don't. So stick with me through recruiting and we'll cover this segment here. But this is a good indicator on who you're going to be able to realistically recruit. Let me get into recruiting. We'll look at that next episode and uh, hopefully finish that up. So guys, hit that like button for me. Subscribe if you're new. And uh, we'll see you next episode. Have a good one. Bye.